ChatGPT5 is finally here and it might be the greatest AI model ever created. Now, what we're gonna do in this video is two things. First, I'm gonna go over some high level stuff about GPT-5, what you should care about, how it compares to other big time models. And then we're gonna go through and actually create an AI agent using GPT-5 without any code. Now, if you're rather advanced, you've been in this channel for a while, the second half of this video where we go through the no code AI agent might be a little simplistic for you. It's really for people who are just dipping their toes into the low code waters and wanna see how they can incorporate GPT-5. But even if you are a little more advanced, I think the first half will be great so you can see what GPT-5 really buys you, what are the costs, how does it actually work, right? Is it a thinking model? Is it like a mini model? Is it all the above? We'll dive through it all. So strap in and let's get started. So first, let's talk really quick about the difference between the GPT-5 API, which is something we're gonna be using a lot when it comes to building AI agents, and the GPT-5 inside of ChatGPT, because there are some slight differences. Now, when it comes to the ChatGPT GPT-5, and I'm just gonna to refer to that as ChatGPT from now on, we've heard a lot about the fact that it's like a dynamic model, right? It can give you quick answers, it can give you thoughtful answers, depending on what you ask it and how you prompt it, right? I could specifically tell GPT-5, tell me about AI agents and really think about it. And it's gonna take a moment to respond, right? It's actually thinking longer for a better answer. And I have the option to get a quick answer. Now compare that to the API. It's a little bit different. We don't just have one model we can choose from. We actually have three. And you see that right here. They're releasing GPT-5 in three sizes. We have the GPT-5, which is like the big thinking model, the mini and the nano. Now, if you've been playing around 4.1 for the last few months, it's kind of the same infrastructure slash architecture, right? You got your big powerful model with GPT-5, you want that for that really strong tasks. Then you have the mini and the nano, which are cheaper and tend to be a little bit quicker. GPT-5 also has a few new parameters that we're able to play with, namely the verbosity parameter, right? Do I want it to just keep talking forever and ever? Or do I want short, concise answers? And we have the ability to actually tweak the reasoning effort parameter, right? So how fast we want it to give the answers, how much do we really want it to think, right? So now that's actually a knob we're able to tune, which is great for developers. And those three things, verbosity, reasoning effort, and the split between the three models is the biggest difference between what you get here inside of ChatGPT and what you get inside of the API. Next, let's talk about cost. So here's a comparison of GPT-5 with some of the other major models. Now, remember, what are input costs, what are output costs, what are tokens? Think of each word you give your AI agent or ChatGPT a token, right? Each word is a token, and the input is the words you give it in the prompt, and the output are the words you give back. And there's a different cost for each. Now, the big boy GPT-5 input cost per million tokens is $1.25, output cost is 10. Actually, that's pretty reasonable and cheaper than a lot of the other big time models, right? If we compare that to 2.5 Pro from Gemini, it has double the input cost and 50% higher output cost. Grok 3, also relatively expensive. And this is also essentially in line, slightly cheaper than 4.0 and definitely cheaper than 03. And then we also have the mini and the nano cost, which are very cheap. We're talking about five cents per million tokens on the input and 40 cents for the output. So these uh, minis and nanos are actually great. And probably and when it comes to production, you're gonna be using mini a lot. Really great power for the cost. Now, in terms of power, how does it compare? So now most of the marketing materials showed you GPT-5 versus like 4103. And it was like, yeah, no kidding, guys. Obviously your new model is better than the old model. How do you stack up against your actual competition, right? Gemini, Claude, Grok, right? And we see that here. Now, obviously, take these numbers with a grain of salt. Every one of these companies kind of massages these numbers and how they train their model to do on these tests. But, you know, you figure if everybody's doing it, then it's somewhat of a normal race, right? Everybody's cheating, so it's okay. <laughs> but if we look down here, down GPT-5, we do see that it either leads the pack or it's very close to the front. Um, so obviously crushes it in math and coding. Um, one thing you do want to notice, though, is the context window size does tend to be a little bit smaller, right? 256 versus you see something like Gemini that has a million tokens. Now, we could go into a long discussion about, you know, how much value do you really get out of a million token context window? Because there is some research that says it kind of doesn't even matter. and It's all fake. But again, for those of you who are new, remember what's our tokens. Remember, we said one word gives one token and the context window is how many tokens you can give it or you can work with it at any one time. Um, hallucination rates going down. That's great. Obviously price is pretty good. Um, 
And I think the biggest thing is now the ability for us to kind of tweak those different parameters. So those are the biggest things we need to pay attention to, right? And so big picture, what do we get with GPT-5? We get more power at a pretty good cost, and we're continuing to get more flexibility, right? Especially when it comes to, hey, I can do the five, I can do the mini, I can do the nano, and I can mess with these parameters when it comes to verbosity and when it comes to reasoning, right? Reasoning effort. So great news for everybody. Um, you should really be pumped for this. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to hop into N8N and I'm going to show you how we can build an AI agent with no code powered by GPT-5 and we can kind of play around with some of these parameters. All right, let's now build our no code AI agent powered by GPT-5. So I'm inside of N8N. I'll put a link up to my N8N masterclass if you have no idea what the words N8N mean and you're very, very confused already. Um, it takes you step by step how to get started here. But it's pretty easy. You can hop onto the website right now and start a free trial and totally follow along. So we're just going to do add first step. Um, and I'm going to search for AI agent. And so this AI agent kind of just becomes the foundation that we build everything off of, right? So what we want to do is what I talked about before is GPT-5, right? So I'm going to hit the plus button here on the model. And over here on the right, I'm kind of blocking some of it. But on the bottom right, there's OpenAI chat GPT or OpenAI chat model. And I have a list of models I can choose from, right? Everything from way back when we're going into the archives with 3.5 turbo, but we have GPT-5 here already. And like we talked about before, there's a number of different models, right? GPT-5, it has it by the date, the latest, the mini, and the nano. So let's just go with GPT-5. Now you do need to connect an OpenAI account to do this. And how do you do that? Well, we'll go through it real fast. You're just gonna go to create new credential, and then you're gonna hit open docs up here. and NADN actually has really solid documentation, and you're just going to follow the instructions of how to do that. So we'll do it real fast. We're going to go to OpenAI, and you just essentially can also search for OpenAI um, API. So OpenAI API and ChatGPT, those are two separate essentially entities under the OpenAI umbrella, right? OpenAI's API is what we use to you know, create AI agents like this, right? We're talking to an API versus ChatGPT is like a standalone thing, right? It can be kind of confusing at first, just understand there's, those are two different places. And the API requires a certain amount of money too. And by a certain amount of money, I mean like you just throw it a couple dollars versus ChatGPT, you're paying, you know, your 20 bucks a month or whatever. So just understand also the billing is a little bit different. So anyways, we're going to be in here. You're going to create an account or log in. And then what we need to do if you've never been here before is first thing we need to do is set up our billing. Um, so to do that, you're going to hit this little gear up on the right. You're going to go to billing on the left, and then you're just going to go to add to credit balance. Again, just a few bucks is fine. Next, you're going to go to API keys and you're going to do create new secret key. Now you can call this whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Project can be default project. This key is essentially just our secret password that when we use the API, we're essentially telling OpenAI, like, hey, I'm I'm part of the club. Like, use my credits, give me access. Here's my secret password. So you're gonna copy that. Don't let people know this, and don't worry, I will delete this after this video. You're gonna come back in here and you're just gonna paste that API key in. And that's all you gotta do. You're just gonna save it. I'll just call this GPT-5 test. Save that. And guess what? You're now connected. So you're now connected, assuming you did the billing. Um, we have the model, and there's some options we can play with. Now, unfortunately, those parameters I talked about earlier, like verbosity, reasoning effort, that's not in here yet. Um, I imagine in a very soon to occur edit and update that will be in here, but kind of a bummer we can't play around with that just yet. But now we essentially have like the makings of kind of chat GPT. We're just going to add memory real quick. So you can just hit memory and then do simple memory. Context window length is five. That just means it's going to remember like our last five messages. Now, once you add the memory, you can just open the chat window and talk to it just like you would chat GPT. You can just say, hey, what's up? My name is Chase. And we can see it going to work right here, right? The open AI model is thinking and it's giving us a response saying, hey, what's up? So at a very base level, you essentially have like a shadow of ChatGPT already built. We wanted to make it an agent, right? So what makes an AI agent an AI agent? Well, it's the ability for some sort of AI system to be dynamic, right? And to do things on our behalf using tools. So we're going to add a tool to it. 
So I just hit the plus button here and I'll move this over. And you can see a bunch of tools native to N8N. So I can add all these tools to our AI agent and have it actually use the tool to do things, right? You see here, we have a, a Notion tool. So we could have it actually, you know, go inside of Notion and do things, a SQL tool. It's a NASA tool for some reason, but like point being, I can give it tools and tools and tools. And then based on what I tell it, it can dynamically to choose the right tool for the job, right? That's kind of agentic. Now, just for this demo, I'm just gonna do Gmail. Now I will link a video up top that kind of goes through how to set up Google accounts and all that if you really wanna follow through with this, but this is kind of just a demo AI in action, right? So I've connected my account as always, you can create a new credential and follow the documentation. But beyond this, you'll notice here we have a to, a subject and a message. Now, what are these little stars over here? It says, let the model define this parameter. I'll move back over real quick. It says, let the model define this parameter. What does that mean? Well, if I click this, now this means AI, in this case, GPT-5, is going to decide who the two is, who the subject is, and what the message is going to be based on the chat message we have with it, right? So, for example, I can say, send an email to Chase, and I give it an email. Now, we could take this a step further, right? and actually give it a database with emails or like our Google contact. So I could just say, hey, email Chase and it would know the email. But for the demo, we're not gonna do that. So send an email to Chase saying, what's up? So I'm gonna send this and what it's gonna do is it's actually going to take my message, be like, okay, I know there's a Gmail tool attached to it. I'm gonna send the email. So really we've now created essentially ChatGPT that has the ability to do things, right? It's the same as going to actual ChatGPT, right? And saying, hey, send an email to Chase saying this. Right. And this is just one example with one tool, and we could add more and more and more tools and get rather sophisticated. But you saw how easy it was to essentially set this up using stuff like GPT-5. And obviously the model we're using here is <laughs> really powerful. And honestly, this is like almost too much for just sending simple emails. And you can see like it's really thinking about it. Um, and it would probably be even quicker if we just use a simpler model. All right, it said it sent the email. It took a sweet time with that because uh, we kind of put a jet engine in a Volvo with this setup. But let's see if it actually sent the email. So here's the email. Hey, Chase, what's up? Easy. Now, this was a good demo of why you probably don't want to have like a full-blown thinking model if you're going to have it do its simple tasks. But the power of something like this is really shown when we just add more and more tools. And right, we could spend all day here adding tool after tool after tool, right? And just kind of going crazy with this thing. But this is kind of the foundations of building any sort of no code AI agent setup, right? And you saw how easy it is to get that foundation created with no code required, just essentially dragging and dropping different modules. So that is where I'm going to end you. If you're interested in kind of diving deeper into this, check out some of my other videos. We make other sophisticated AI agents. You can also check out the community, links to that below as well. And um, if nothing else, I hope this gave you a pretty good overview of what GPT-5 can and can't do what we're seeing with the API and sort of the subtleties with each model. So let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, I'll see you around.